Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night. It is the Earthmaster here, Friday, May 3rd, 2024. It's about 11.37 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.7 up here into the Alaska region. That is the latest quake there on the globe. Still seeing uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity ramping up there in the hawaii area so let's go check out see what we got there here's a live image of the upper east rift zone there uh, from the kilauea volcano things look calm for now uh, no signs of any visible fissure activity opening up the latest update put out here today from the usgs states that the volcano is currently not erupting but still seeing quite a bit of earthquake activity with no significant change in the past three days so over the past 24 hours, we've seen approximately 280 earthquakes in this area. Uh, there has been a few earthquakes in the caldera south of the crater uh, in the same period. The depths of these earthquakes remain uh, concentrated there between 2 to 3 kilometers below the surface with scattered shallower and deeper earthquakes. So obviously things are still continuing at this time. Let's go ahead and check out the latest earthquake map here from the USG, uh, USGS. Noticing some broader movement out here as well across the area uh, with the 3.1 well off the coast here, the big island outside of the Le uh, Lelani Estates area. This one's pretty deep though, about 35 kilometers deep. Uh, the main concentration of earthquakes is starting to migrate over here across the uh, southeast rift zone. Uh, it has been confined mainly up here in the upper east rift zone, but we've got to watch this here because it looks like it's starting to migrate a little bit. Now, I know they're not showing all of the earthquakes here on the map. This is just what is going out to the public. Um, there's obviously a lot more. They mentioned it in their update that there's been uh, about 280 or so in the last 24 hours. Uh, they're only showing about 51 here in the last 24 hours, but still. Uh, a lot of earthquake activity happening here. I'd like to know if there's further migration here. I really wish they would add um, you know, all the earthquakes that they're seeing. But uh, let's go check out the um, seismograph stations here real quick and see what we have. Let me zoom in just a little bit, see what's going on. Hopefully everyone's having a good Friday night out there. Uh, okay, so here's a little bit of migration here across this area. I want to see if we got any changes here. Um, it looks like a little bit less activity here in the last few hours, but still overall elevated seismic activity there on that map these are all earthquakes in the last 12 hours now there is a tilt meter down here this one is showing uh what looks like a little bit further inflation here uh, across the area and overall ground deformation here in the region still quite high in the summit area uh, so this is obviously something we're going to have to watch here as this has been the uh, highest in terms of inflation since 2018 so obviously something's going on here and uh, i think we're getting close here to seeing an eruption out here across the upper east rift zone but again gotta watch for migration here see if we don't get maybe an intrusion out towards this area uh, similar to what we've seen in 2018 we'll keep an eye on it the rest of the map out here does show some activity across the indonesia islands area with the latest quake of 4.8 in that area uh, also, some further movement here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Looks like a pair of fives, fairly deep earthquakes occurring uh, roughly at about the same time as each other here across this plate boundary. Uh, USGS is showing both of those quakes, 5.1 and a 5.3 earlier this afternoon and evening. Actually, it looks like they're missing one. There's one, uh, well, let's see here, Vanuatu, I guess it's on there, right? Okay, maybe it's on there. Uh, so, yeah, either way, a pair of earthquakes here in this area. Uh, some deeper movement here across the Kermadec Trench. And, of course, New Zealand seeing some activity this morning. Looks like this here is a little bit older. No new activity to report down there for now. Definitely seeing some heightened activity out here across the Pacific Plate and adjacent plates here. Moving through the Java Trench. Look at all these white circles here indicating some recent activity. Uh, even so, around the northern Mariana Islands out here. So we'll keep an eye on things. Definitely looking uh, quite active in that region. Uh, the Alaska area did see a 4.3. That earthquake there in the Cook Inlet area was from early this morning, about 2 o'clock. 
early Friday morning. Uh, since then, a pair of earth well, maybe a handful of earthquakes out here across the region of Alaska. Really nothing major going on for now. No major swarms that I can see here across the area. Uh, they're in the Pacific Northwest. A handful of smaller quakes there across Mount Rainier. And it uh, looks like we've got a 1.1 just on the, uh, oh, not for sure where, where that's at, but away from the volcanoes just there in the Cascade Mountain Range. Uh, let me check the trimmer map here tonight before I jump over that. Looks like about 468 earth, uh, I was going to say earthquakes, but they're trimmers, not earthquakes. These are slow slip events here centered around this area of Oregon and also underneath Northern California here. So that's a decent number, but still overall trend here shows below uh, what we had witnessed in the years past in terms of trimmer activity. But either way, um, over the last week, I think we've seen a little bit for a total count of 1,679 epicenters. Again, mostly in this area that we're seeing the trimmer activity today. So what that means is we're getting some uh, some pushing and shoving down of the Juan de Fuca plate underneath the North American plate here. And of course, when that happens, one would think here that that's adding further strain here against the uh, subduction zone just offshore. The sleeping giant. It's best that that thing stays quiet. Uh, a little bit of activity here across the Long Valley Super Volcano as well. Very small earthquakes um, just outside the Caldera. Bay Area of California, pretty quiet. Southern California, roughly about the same. No major swarming going on. And as we look at the rest of the country here, a little bit of activity out in the oil fields, scattered out and about across Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, over here across the eastern portion of the country. Looks like uh, Ohio seen a two-pointer. A 1.8 there in Maine and also New Jersey jumping in on the earthquake activity today as well. A little bit of aftershock sequences going on there with a 1.2. But overall, definitely seeing a, a little bit of activity out here. That's why I say we, in my last update, we've got to keep an eye on some of these regions here that have not seen any large-scale activity in a couple hundred years. Could be some little telltale signs here of things uh, getting, uh, maybe possibly getting uh, busy out here. Yellowstone National Park. Let's go over and check out the latest map here real quick. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot to chat about. Uh, the seismograph stations here look quite quiet. This is not magma. This is not uh, fluid movement underground. This is wind activity from earlier. Um, that also showed up on a couple other stations out here. Exposed to the elements. Aside from that, really no, seism uh, no seismic activity out there that I can see. Maybe a little spike. Okay. If I had to look really hard, be these couple spikes there that are probably well below the 1.0 threshold. All right, uh, Peru, underneath Peru, got a 4.9 coming in here in the last hour. 113 kilometers deep for that quake. And, um, you know, it looks quite busy out here against the Middle America Trench and the South America region. Um, I think, let's see here. Yeah, that's the last 24 hours. It does look quite active over here, but spread out, not in one specific area, just up and down the board here in terms of earthquake activity. Uh, into the South Sandwich Islands there, looks like we did see another 5.1 from earlier today. Uh, kind of said to watch for this area. I mentioned that last night in my update. We've been seeing a lot of activity here at the northern end of the subduction zone recently confined to this area. Uh, some of these have been shallow. The last one was a 4.8, fairly deep. Uh, but notice here about six hours later, we've seen some surface adjustment taking place here at the, the uh, subduction zone interface level here with that 5.1 coming in very shallow at 10 kilometers. So a little bit of back and forth here between deeper movement quakes. Uh, we'll keep an eye on this area. Overall, the last 30 days does show mainly confined up here to the northern segment of the subduction zone. Uh, it's possible we could see things fill in here further south as we head into the days ahead. Um, let's see here. Afghanistan, that's from last night. A little four-pointer out there. The Atlantic Ocean, aside from down south, looks pretty quiet. And the Mediterranean region there, a handful of twos showing up on the map. Let's check out Iceland and see what's going on out there across that area of the world. Of course, this is another area we're kind of watching for 
eruptive activity. I mean, we're already seeing some eruptive activity, but uh, looking at maybe another new one popping up here soon. Earthquake activity, very minimal. Uh, here's the Grindavik area and our ongoing eruption activity here. Fairly quiet, not a whole lot going on. Uh, let's go check out the live from Iceland site. See what's going on out there. Uh, still active. A month and a half now of ongoing eruptive activity here. Not, you know, I, I don't see any noticeable uptick. No noticeable increase in the flow of lava or fountaining from this. There's obviously some periodic um, fountaining going on, but... It doesn't look like anything has changed there across that uh, area for now, even though we're looking at consistent elevated um, inflation going on underneath the area. Um, okay, I understand. Here's our inflation chart right here. Notice this thing really peaking up, including with the ongoing eruption taking place there. So we're not noticing any type of deflation uh, a couple things could happen here we could see a new magma intrusion into a different area with a uh, subsequent fissure event uh, that could take place it could be anywhere um, you know we did see a little earthquake swarming out here a couple weeks back outside of Grindavik it's, uh, that was a little concerning but uh, really nothing has changed since then here's our ongoing eruption uh, again, the whole area here, the Savart Singhi area, is continuing to show elevated inflation across the area. So, uh, um, signs of a new magma run, new magma intrusion, or uh, eruptive event would be as before extremely sudden and intense small earthquakes in and around the magma tunnel and subsidence in Savart Singhi. But right now, we're not really seeing any elevated earthquake activity just continuing to see this land uh continue to accumulate inflation here so just kind of watch it similar well a different setup compared to um, the kilauea volcano but still two active regions that we have to watch all right uh what else we got out here folks space weather activity from the solarham.com site still shows uh some elevated activity out here we do have a um, fairly nice sunspot facing the Earth. That's going to be 3663. The culprit of an X flare here recently and a couple other M flares. It has shown some signs of uh, continued complexity. We also have a newer sunspot region down here showing some little popcorn colors in this magnetic structure that the sunspot harbors as well. Overall, I would say a few of these are looking more complex here than what we've seen this morning so we'll continue to keep an eye on the sunspots 25 percent elevated chance for an x flare and flare at 75 c flare around 99 percent chance or so and um no auroras right now in the forecast or right now but in the forecast it looks like that x flare produced a cme here recently um let's go over and check that out real quick from the space weather prediction center Let's go ahead and see what they have. So the x flare did produce a CME, which we're going to see here right there in the Earth-directed view, the green dot. Looks like we are going to get uh, a decent glancing blow from that uh, subsequent CME. Looks, uh, looks not bad. Elevated speed. There's some plasma density as well, so we could be looking at uh, G2 class storm as we head into the May 6th time frame. This is going to be UTC of May 6th, so we're looking at a couple more days before that comes up here. We'll cover that as we get a little bit closer, but yeah, maybe we'll see some auroras down here. Look at that KB index up around the 6th range or so. That's what they're forecasting. Depending on how things play out, it could be lower or it could be even more depending on the um, the amount of CME and plasma that uh, is sent off, that was sent off from that uh, X flare. All right, Storm Prediction Center out here, still dealing with some severe weather out there across this area tonight. Looking at uh, Kansas area, a lot going on in Texas as well. Uh, Monday we have a, well, this is going to be on Saturday. 
some more severe weather out here. A little enhanced zone out there in uh, western Texas with a 10% chance for tornado activity as well. Uh, these guys just cannot get a break out there. Uh, this is going to be for Sunday. Monday does look like it's going to be another severe weather event, maybe potentially a high-end tornado event as well. So we got to pay close attention to what's going on out here Monday. Definitely got to keep an eye on that. We'll cover that as we get a little bit closer. Uh, the windy map out here, we do have a storm system knocking on the door here of Northern California, out here where I'm at. There's the storm systems out here across western Oklahoma, central Kansas, and up into the beautiful state of Nebraska. They got uh, a little noisy night to deal with out there. Now, there is a uh, low pressure system here coming into the west coast. You can see it right here. That's going to be the troublemaker for Monday. Uh, but first, it's going to bring some decent precipitation and snow out here to the California and Oregon area. Goodness, we just don't get this type of storm system out here in May. Kind of odd, but we'll take it. I'll take this over 100 degrees any day. Uh, anyway, that's going to scoot by uh, through the weekend here and stir up the pot come Monday, it looks like, with some severe weather. This could be a nighttime event, unfortunately. Uh, Monday night into Tuesday, those those things are dangerous. Those tornadoes can hit any time, but nighttime ones are even more uh, dangerous and scary out there. So we'll pay attention to what's going on out here. We'll, again, we'll cover the forecast a little bit more um, in the days ahead before that happens on Monday. Uh, after that, um, looks like potentially things close up a little bit in terms of the severe weather door. Uh, until maybe about the 16th or so. Looks like low pressure centered over Colorado. May stir things up out here, but we'll have to keep an eye on it. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Enjoy your Friday. It is a weekend, so make sure you guys enjoy it. Monday comes around a lot quicker than one would want. A little spike of an earthquake there on hot caves. Again, um, similar to eruptive activity, fissure activity there in Iceland, we would see uh, a huge amount of earthquake activity across this region prior to any eruptive activity. Uh, and it's definitely elevated, right? They're talking hundreds of earthquakes here in the last 24 hours, but only have 50. So, uh, and this was from a uh, geologist there that uh, monitored the activity timothy sent me an email here uh but i guess they focus on what they need to focus on and secondary information where secondary response goes to the public here so i'm sure you know if they had plenty of time they would probably add this onto the map as far as the earthquakes that they're seeing but uh it would be nice to see exactly you know where all these extra earthquakes are occurring where's the hundreds of earthquakes occurring at are they occurring further over here across the the uh, the area off this distance uh, is it further in the crater you know where are they occurring at were they all cluttered in this area here who knows so either way we'll have to work with what we got keep an eye on what's going on here notice a little migration off here to the the alohi seamount as well now remember all that magma back in february got displaced from the summit area off to the southwest rift zone. I can't remember how many cubic meters of magma it was, but it was a significant amount. Uh, so there's a whole lot going on out here right now. No eruption is the same as any other eruption. This could be something entirely different. You never know. So we'll have to watch it and uh, work with what we have. You guys have a good night. We'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow for the uh, weekend update Saturday. Goodness. Have a good one, folks. Stay safe out there.